probably more extreme than the last one. But the, the slow bits are much slower, the doom bits are doomier, the heavy bits are heavier. It's gone more in that direction. So I think that's how it's seen the possible improvement on the last one. And I think natural evolution as well. As we get older, we like to think we're better at songwriting uh, and performing. So um, whatever we did on For Lies, as good as it is, we have to have improved upon it now because we're more mature. Uh, I'm not saying we were kids back then, but you know, we progressed with our songwriting, um, lyrically and musically, and I think that shows on the new album, definitely. The World, yeah, we're doing a video for The Poorest Waltz, which I think is the second track on the album. Um, should be quite an interesting video. We've got a, a troupe of gothic belly dancers involved in it. Um, which you don't see that in many rock videos these days, which is, is quite interesting. So it's a nice song, it's well paced, I think the fans um, are going to really enjoy it. Um, we don't do many videos, um, but we've got a good storyboard for this one. Um, so I think people are going to quite like it. I don't think there's uh, any assumption of any role, really. I mean, when we go away, we we kind of like move as one unit, we're all in family, we're all very close, so there's no assumption of any kind of specific role. We are just who we are and you know we get on really well. I I have to become someone else on stage. I'm not I, I'm not the day-to-day -day person you might see. On stage you you have to take on a persona of something else because you're propelled by the music and the adrenaline is, is, is off the scale. And you just can't be well, I can't be the same person as them. I know loads of singers can waltz out on stage and go through the motions, and they love it. Um, and they, there's loads of banter and all the rest of it, and I just can't do that. I'm so focused on the job at hand and the tales I have to tell and the environments I have to get into in my mind. For that. I'm on another planet, and I'm bumping into other members on stage. I'm rolling around on the floor crying, and I'm, I'm just I'm living the part of the characters in each song. And you, so that's nothing to do with my day-to-day -day life. I am a completely different person on stage. What surprises people, people who have seen my dying bride perform, when they meet us, they're quite surprised at how sort of upbeat we are. We're not all sort of miserable and sad because th that persona on stage is a rock star persona. It's, it's a performance. Uh, it's, I often say you know, John Wayne was never a cowboy. He played a cowboy so many times, people expected him to be a cowboy offset, and he wasn't. He's a, you know, he's a normal guy. I'm not the person you see on stage. There's a bit of me there, obviously, because I created those characters, um, but we're generally surprisingly fairly chirpy people. Oh, I'd say on stage, definitely. It's more physically involved, there's no question about that. I mean, in the studio it's much different, it's more mentally intense because the pressure's on to get it spot on, it's got to be perfect obviously. But with regards to it being very fusing, I would definitely stay on stage because you can just get involved, you know, physically and to me that's much more satisfying, you know. Yeah, the album is very clinical. But yeah. And there's no, there's a bit of adrenaline but you, it's almost like doing an exam. You, you've done the prep and now you've got to nail it. And there's no buzz from fans, or there's no sort of build up to the excitement. You know, you've, you've got work to do, and it, it's costing money. Uh, so you've got to get it done. So live and studio are completely different things. I mean, I don't really like performing live that much, but I, I don't really like being in the studio that much either. But I think out of the two, I probably prefer playing live because of the buzz. And you're as a team, quite often when you're recording, you record on your own, and it's all stitched together later on. Um, so, so you know, I guess playing live is, is fundamentally more exciting than being in the studio. We, we work hard and we put a lot of effort into the look as well as the sound. Um, you know, the lyrics aren't written on a whim. You know, I study hard to get the lyrics just right. The guys work hard with the music. Um, and we surprise people from time to time with some interesting ideas they wouldn't expect. And I think a lot of other bands, when as popular as this scene is, they, they're trying to, they're almost going through the motions. They're picking out what they like from other bands and just running with it and mashing it all together. It's not that great. They're just, they're just missing the mark a little bit where I think 
we know what we want and we're not taking anything from anybody else. It's all our own stuff. And you can tell it's all our own stuff. And it's not really influenced by anything anymore. In the early days, it was influences from the likes of Celtic Frost and Candle Mass and even Slayer to some extent. These days, it's all 100% my dying ride. It's, and this is what we do. We've been doing it long enough now to be able to really focus and, and, and get it right. And I think a lot of other bands in this burgeoning scene are just borrowing ideas from all the other bands, and they're all starting to sound pretty much the same. I think someone's going to have to do something exciting and new um, and dangerous in order to stand out, otherwise they'll just drown with everybody else. It's a bit of both, actually. Um, for example, on the new album, um, A Tapestry Scorn, the lyrics were written probably a year before the music. Um, just because I had an idea and I penned it and I was hoping to use it at some point in the music. Because sometimes I write lyrics which never get used. They just don't seem to, f to fit very well. Um, but the majority of time the music comes first and I like to really sort of indulge myself in it and listen to it over and over and over again and see if a little spark lights the fire of, uh, of ideas and it's, sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it does. Um, but it can change songs as well because the rest of the guys when they've created some music they have a vision and a feel of what this track's going to be like. Once I've put lyrics on it and done the vocals to it, that can often change completely. Mostly for the better, thankfully. And the guys sometimes will say, wow, I had no idea you were going to take the song in that direction. It's nothing like we expected. Um, and sometimes it's quite startling when you hear remarks like that because you're hoping they, they mean it in a good way. Um, but yeah, it's just sometimes you hear a song and it sparks an idea and you write the idea that you were influenced by the music. But Clearly the rest of the band were not going down that road, they were going down a different road, but it still comes together in the end and everyone, you know, thankfully thinks it's, it's all wonderful, but it's, it's mostly music first, occasionally the lyrics come first, it's harder that way around because you have to somehow, somehow shoehorn your words, which you prefer not to edit, into some music, and that's quite difficult. It's better, I think, if you have the music first, because then you can write the text around the riffs, that, that's the easier option. But once in a while, if you get an idea, you just write it down and hope that it will fit later. <laughs>